Hi everyone, it's Christine here from Ever After Paper Crafts. And today we're going to be making this super fun underwater scene with some watercolor paints. And we're going to be working on these mermaids here with some um, Zig Real Brush markers. It's very hard. I don't think the camera's going to pick it up, but I've coated these mermaids with some pretty Wink of Stella sparkle pen as well. And I don't think that that's going to pick up, but it should pick up in the photographs, which I'll post on my blog. And I will have a link to my blog in the description box below of this video. So the seam set that we're using today today is a brand new release from Mama Elephant. It's called Mermaid Kisses and this is the stamp set. How cute is that? You can also purchase coordinating dies separately and um, what I do is sometimes I color more than I need so if you notice this this here is one of the coral pieces that is that is on the card and I just cut and colored too many so these these storage pockets are also great for storing extra things that you've maybe colored and cut out but didn't ultimately use on this card because you might be able to use it later so that's just a little quick tip for you. Okay Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. To create this card, you're obviously going to need the stamp set, some cardstock, some watercolor paper. I use my Ganzai Tambi um, watercolor paints to create this really kind of fun, almost abstract looking um, underwater ocean kind of um, vibe. I really just got out my watercolor paints one day and decided to play around. And I sort of did this underwater scene kind of in a very similar way that I do a night sky scene but just a little bit different um, so you'll need some watercolor paper and the paints for that you can use any watercolor paints you don't have to use the Ganzai Tambi that I use they are on sale right now I just happened to notice it popped up in my Amazon feed that they are only $26 right now for the 36 palette set which I have um, which is a very affordable price in my opinion so if you're interested you might want to check out Amazon for that if you're interested in this technique you also need some zig markers if you want to color the mermaids like I did. This video is probably going to be a little on the long side so I might just color one of the mermaids just to do a little zig coloring with you today. All right so let's go ahead and get started. I've gone ahead and cut out a piece of watercolor cardstock. I cut it at six and a half by five and a quarter. As I've mentioned in other videos before, I always plan when I'm watercoloring for my watercolor piece to be the full front of an A2 size card. A2 size card is five and a half by four and a quarter. Then if I cut it down, that's fine, but at least I know I have enough. Then I also have it taped down here with this painter's tape which will um, help eliminate some of the warping. Even though this is watercolor paper and it's meant for water, um, it's still paper and so it can warp. Taping it down to a hard board like this, you could use a cutting board, uh, anything that you have, a clipboard maybe, anything that you have that's hard um, will help um, lessen that warping. I'm going to turn it this way today because I'm going to be creating a portrait style little um, cutout. Um, so, oh, and to finish that train of thought, I'm so sorry, um, I kind of lost that train of thought, didn't I? Because I have the painter's tape taping this down, I cut this an inch larger on each side than a normal A2 size card front. And that will accommodate for the tape, so you know when you just peel the tape off and trim off that white part from the tape, you're going to have plenty of room there for a full A2 sized um, card front. Now this one I did cut down a little bit more um, than just A2 sized, um, but again, I always just my personal um, kind of way of doing things is I always make sure that I have enough for a full card front just in case I want to use the whole thing and not cut it down. So I'm going to go ahead and bring over my Ganzai Tambi paints. This is what the palette looks like. It's 36 colors. These are watercolor paints. They're very good in my opinion. They have a almost kind of chalky um, texture to them and they really create very dynamic, very bright and beautiful colors, which is great. Um, and also if you have your heat gun handy, you can layer them on top of each other to really blend and also make really bright, vibrant colors which I never honestly thought you could really do with watercolor until I started playing around. So I also have a cup of water here um, and I have a uh, watercolor brush. This is just a Grumbacher brush. I got this one at Michael's. I like using these flathead um, brushes. That's probably not the right word for them, but these brushes that have just this flat kind of um, point to them. Um, I just kind of find that sometimes in doing landscapes or such, um, they're, um, they're really easy to, to work with. So now I just co covered my watercolor paper with just a light layer of water and that's going to help get our paints kind of going. Now I kind of like to start first with my lightest blue and uh, just kind of set some color down and then go from there. 
So we're only going to be working with blue, different shades of blue today since we are creating a nice underwater scene. And I kind of want it to be nice and drippy and, you know, globby and fun oceany. So um, it might look kind of a mess, but just trust me and bear with me here. So I'm going to take my light blue first, and I can't give you the names of these colors of paints because the names are in Japanese. So I'll just read off the numbers as I go. This is number 61, which is a very light blue. And I've just laid some of that color down. I'm next going to go in with a slightly darker blue, which is number 64, and lay some of that down in a different kind of area than what I already just laid down. So I'm just gonna kind of do, do 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 lay some of that down, and that's why I like this bigger brush. It's really great for laying down um, lots of color uh, quickly. Now I'm gonna go into the next darkest color, which is number 63. This is my favorite blue, and I mentioned in a, in another video recently. I'm almost out of this one, so I was glad to find a store online that sells just the little um, the little palettes of color um, by themselves. So you can just poke them right back into your um, your palette. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just dry this little glob that I have here. It's really handy to have a heat tool nearby when you're watercoloring because it allows you to dry this quickly so you can then layer more color on top. So either blend colors together or brighten the color that you've already laid down. So I'm just going to quickly dry this with my heat tool here. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and just keep adding color. So I'm going to reach in now to number 62, and again, I'm just using blues here, and uh, we're just going to kind of mix this into the some of the white spaces, even go on top of some of the spaces we already have. We're just playing around. There is absolutely no technique to anything that I'm doing here, I promise you. Um, I just created this um, background scene, uh, honestly, just playing around with, with my watercolor paints. So that was number 62. We're now gonna, and I'm cleaning my brush, by the way, with this cup of water every time before I go into another paint. Number 66 is next. It's a very dark blue, as you can see. It's very pretty. And we'll get, we'll get this in some of these white spaces here. And now we're gonna dry this again. And really chase those water droplets. I'm putting quite a bit of water on this, unlike when I do a night sky, because I kind of want to chase this water around lift my board up, let it drip down a little bit because this is an underwater scene and we want it to look wet and we want it to look kind of drippy and I almost even went a little abstract for this, um, if you will, um, just because it was fun, honestly. If there's nothing special about this whatsoever, it's just fun and I kind of liked the way it looks so I thought I'd share it with you guys. I'm going to go back into that 66, which is the dark color and uh, just kind of go around the corner a little bit here as well. And as you can see, as I'm drying, since I've dried these layers, um, you're not getting like a muddy mess when I put this on top of other color. Uh, if you had not dried the layers first, you're gonna, it's gonna kind of turn muddy. Almost like when you're using distress inks um, and you wet them and you know, it kind of sometimes can turn into a, a, a muddy brownish kind of mixture of messiness as the colors all gloop and glop together. Um, you'll notice that's not happening here. And that's just because of this sweet little um, inexpensive heat tool. It's really, really a great thing to have when you're watercoloring. So now I'm going to get to my darkest blue, and this is number 67. And I'm just going to kind of fill in some of these last remaining empty spots of where the white paper is kind of peeking out. And now we're going to go ahead and dry that. And then we're going to go over everything again with the original colors. So I'm going to go on top of the different places that you see here with the color that we had initially laid down. And that is going to create a much more vibrant, um, dramatic, if you will, uh, color for us. So let me show you what I mean. I had a little bit of the lightest blue, which is number 61, right here. So I'm going to put that back down. And then, and some of this I can do without drying in between because I'm going to kind of stay away from some of the, um, you know, from, from the colors that directly overlap each other. I'm going to put some of this here. I had some of this up here. So we're just kind of just going back over it here with some of that, some of the same color. So it gets just really, really vibrant and beautiful. Put some of this here and here and here. And uh, as you can see, I'm getting a little bit more free now with the water as well, because I'm really, really, really wanting this to look underwatery and gloppy and glippy and wet. <laughs> so we are trying to achieve that here. And it's not hard to do to achieve that with watercolor paints. It's kind of fun. So we're just kind of going over. Now I'm going to dry it really quick. 
And then what I'm going to do is, after I've dried this a little bit, I am going to take a clean water uh, paintbrush. So in other words, you know, clean it off in the water and then move, move it over directly to the paper to kind of straighten out and clean up some of these harsher lines a little bit. And here's a water droplet I want to chase around really quickly here. So let's chase this. There we go. See how it's kind of droopy here a little bit? That's kind of the effect I was looking for. All right. Now, like I said, I'm going to take this clean paintbrush now that just has water on it and just kind of run it over and in between these mixtures of color so that those um, globs of different colors of paint will blend together nicer uh, and it won't look quite so just blobby for lack of a, <laughs> that's a technical term, right? Um, but for lack of a better word to use there that I can't come up with at the moment. So we're just filling in all this white space and making the transitions between the colors just a little bit nicer. There we go. Isn't Doesn't that look beautiful, guys? Now imagine, I know to some of you, you might be thinking right now, oh my gosh, Christine, what are you trying to teach us, right? It looks ridiculous. But remember, you're going to be taking one, probably, or you can just cut it down with with a um, with a paper trimmer. But I like to use dies when I'm when I'm working with my with my stamped images in my background. And for example, this is the this, this rectangle die that I use. So you're going to be putting this on here, so it's not going to be quite as big. It's not going to be so much um, to work with there. And I think you'll find that once you kind of cut it down a little bit, um, you'll find it a little bit more pleasing to the eye and a little bit easier to work with. I'm going to quickly draw this we're just going to add a few more pops of color and then we will be done with the um the painting part of this video all right i'm gonna have to go back of course to my favorite blue and make sure that that is prominent in this it's that turquoise bluish color that i'm almost out of it's number 63 and i'm going to put it on top of where i already know that it's located just to make sure that it really pops out um, and we're just going to dry that quickly here. And then we'll go back over again with our um, just wet, clean paintbrush to blend it all together again. And then up close, and this was showing the photographs on my blog of the finished card, but when you look at this up close, you're really going to see different variations of color. And it's actually quite beautiful um, and so easy to do. I mean, how long did this take us? This took us no time at all to do and it's just absolutely beautiful in my opinion and i hope that you love it too it's just an easy kind of fun out of your you know you're not so in your head when you're doing watercolors um you, you lose some control and that things aren't going to be exactly how you might picture them but that's kind of the fun part i think and um it's just a different kind of fun way to add some fun background to your card so I hope that you really, really like it. I would let this dry completely now on its own and you'll see even cooler effects once it's dried completely. Um, but one thing I did wanna to share too is I wanted to create some little kind of interest um, in the sea, um, almost like bubbles. So there's a silver color in this watercolor palette and it's number 95. So I'm just taking a round brush that's much smaller than the brush I was using. And I'm going to take my finger here and just flick some of this color right onto this to this um, to this uh, watercolor cardstock that we've created. And you have to get a lot of water um, to, to make this happen and, and really wet that paint um, to get this to, to come off your brush. It doesn't really wanna come off for me right now. So I'm getting it nice and wet and really globbing the paint on the, the bottom of my paintbrush. As you can see, there's lots of paint on that brush. And I'm gonna take my finger and just glob it down. And this just adds a little bit of interest and it's also really pretty. When this dries, it's gonna be really, really shimmery where those dots landed. So there you go, guys. There is the watercolor background. Let me bring over the final card so you can kind of see it in action there. Um, and I did some white dots on this one too, mixed in with the silver, but you get the idea. So, and a lot of it is covered too. So again, if you see this and you're a little overwhelmed thinking, you know, I don't know about this. Remember, you're going to be cutting it down either with a die or with a paper trimmer. So it's not going to be so much and so overwhelming. And then you're also going to be putting your little colored images on there. So um, remember that that's going to take away some of that maybe overwhelmingness that you might have in, in dealing with watercolor paints. So I hope that this is an 
inspired you to maybe give this a try. Now I'm going to quickly, because this video is already uh, pretty long, I'm going to very quickly, and I'm just gonna color one mermaid for you. I'm gonna color this one right here. So I've already stamped her, and today I stamped her on some watercolor cardstock. I usually use Bristol Smooth, but I wanted to show you the beautiful results that you also get using watercolor cardstock. I will have a list of all of the um, Zig markers that I use for all of the coloring that I did on this card on my blog. And again, that blog link will be in the description box of this video. But um, I will call out the colors that I use on this mermaid as we go along. Then my zigs got a little bit pushed up here as I pulled out the watercolor paint. So give me just a moment here to go ahead and get these uh, markers out. So I have my water brush that I'm going to be using to help do all the work for me here when it comes to coloring with my zigs. Now for her hair, I want her to have kind of a blondish golden color to her hair. And the best way that I found to do that is you take a little bit of brown. And so the color that I'm using right now is, is brown. It's literally just called brown. And I'm just putting a little bit closest to her face where I think it will be the darkest. Now I'm going to take yellow and blend, let me just make sure I'm on the camera, yep. Blend this yellow out just a tad here, blend the brown out rather, I'm sorry, with the yellow. So you get this really pretty, uh, oh, those colors really just blend quite beautifully together, I feel. Now, because you've put this yellow, which is a lighter color, into a darker marker, you want to have paper towel nearby, and all you do is you just scribble off um, so the next your marker to get the brown off of the tip. It's not going to damage the tip, but you don't want to, the next time you use that yellow, have a little bit of brown on it. So that's all that that does for you. It just removes some of that, or all of that actually, um, brown from the tip of the yellow. So the next time you go in to use that yellow, it's perfect, perfectly yellow and ready to go. So now I'm just taking my water brush, blending it back into the two colors here that, that have created this beautiful color and pulling it out into the white space so I get my shading. And I just think that that's really, really beautiful. Um, so that's her hair, quick and easy, right? How easy was that? And um, you can always go back and darken it. That's another good thing that you can do with zigs. And maybe if I have time, I will show you that in just a moment. So now I'm going to color her um, little, uh, bathing your shell top and I just used violet for this and I didn't even use my watercolor brush because it's so small of a space that you really can't even um, you know really see it very well. The next color that I'm going to use is turquoise green for her tail for her mermaid tail and I'm just going to put that color here where I feel it would be darkest some here on her fin and a little bit on this fin as well and then maybe just a little tiny bit of color under her hand where there would be a shadow. Now I'm going to take my water brush again and it's going to do all that work for me. Remember also to scribble off your watercolor brush in between each color that you're using to blend so you so that um, the color doesn't spread or you don't get that other color you know into what you're working on now. And by scribble off I literally just mean you take your paper towel and you scribble this off until no color more color comes off of it. So we're going to make that tail a little bit darker but I want to go back into the hair first and just show you how you can work back over what you've already done. So I want this hair to be just a little bit darker um, and the highlights to be just a little bit more dramatic. So I'm going back in with my brown right where I had it before. I'm going to take my yellow right where I had it before and blend that brown color out in a circular motion. I have found that a circular motion, which is the same kind of motion that I would use working with my Copics to kind of get them to blend really well. Scribble that yellow off on my paper towel and then take my water brush and pull the rest of the color up into the white space. And this is going to create an even more dramatic shading that we since we went over it twice. Look at that, isn't that pretty? I just think she's so pretty. And we're gonna do the same thing now with her tail. So clean your water brush off on your paper towel and then put that color down again, right where you had it before, right where you had it before. And then take your water brush and blend it again and circular motion to pull the color out. The circular motion I have found really helps that color not be in such a strong line anymore. Um, so it doesn't look so harsh and it just kind of blends from the darker shade to the lighter. Um, you know, you still have the, you can still tell where the, where the highlight is, but that harsh line is gone. And I found that using a circular motion really helps with that. So the very last few things that we have to do is I'm going to take some yellow to color in the starfish. They're kind of, they're not going to really blend too well with her hair. I mean, what I'm trying to say is they're kind of going to blend into her hair just a little bit, but I'm going to take some brown 
and add just a dot of brown into each star and then use the yellow to blend it out. So they'll be just a little bit darker um, and, and maybe a little bit more stand out just a little bit more. The two colors that we're going to use for skin are flesh color and blush. The blush is the darkest, so we're going to start with that. Always start with your darker color if you're using more than one. I'm going to put the darker color up near her hairline, blend out with the flesh color, and then take the water brush and let it do the rest of the work for me and pull that color out into the white space. I'm going to do the same thing with her arm. Put the flesh, the blush rather, um, up against her arm here that's closest to her body where there's going to be a shadow. And then blend it with the flesh color. And I left just a little bit of space to color it out with the water brush. I do find that I often with watercolor paper have to go over things twice to get that better um, uh, dramatic shading than I do with the Bristol Smooth. And that's no big deal. This is so quick to do anyway that it really doesn't take much, much extra time at all to do this. Um, but that's something to keep in mind. You may have to work in a couple layers just because I think it's because the watercolor paper is so much thicker that um, for the color to really show up, maybe that's why. I'm just kind of guessing, but um, I did find that I love the results just as much as I do with the Bristol Smooth, but I do sometimes have to go over it a couple times. So there's our mermaid. Um, to finish her off, I would add some Wink of Stella glitter pen. And to do that, you know, you just literally scribble it on to get some really nice um, 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 glitter. <laughs> I couldn't find the word there, I don't know why. So anyway, this is just one quick coloring of one of the mermaids that I used in the, um, in the card. Here again is the final card that we did. So you can see this mermaid, let me zoom back out first. I zoomed in for the coloring, let me zoom back out. And so now you can see the final card again. That's the mermaid I just colored. Um, and then here's the other mermaid. And I colored some, some coral and some seaweed, a little octopus and a starfish. And then of course the cute sentiment says mermaid kisses and starfish wishes. So I hope guys that you really enjoyed this card. Enjoy the process here of making this watercolor um, underground or underwater kind of scene that we created with our watercolor paints. And I hope that you will give this a try. Thank you so much as always for stopping by and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.